Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Catching some pretty good sun today. Very typical, cloudy, yet fairly sunny at the same time. Getting a good amount of solar off this array. And in years past, when we wanted to disconnect this array, we'd come out here and unplug it. But there's a simpler way. In all of the systems that you've watched me build over the past couple of years, I always put the solar panel isolator switches in here. And the questions come up quite a bit. What size do I use and why? And right here, this is a 63 amp, 250 volt isolator switch. And on this particular system, what I'm using are two Victron smart solar charge controllers. Each one is 100 volt, 50 amps and each one is tied into a separate string of that panel array I just showed you of 500 watts. So the idea with the solar isolator switch is a lot of times when I come in here and I want to make an adjustment or change out a part, whatever it may be, the first thing I want to do is shut those solar panels off without having to uh, go outside and, and literally disconnect everything. I mean, you can do that. I've done it in the past, but sticking on an isolator switch makes it much easier. I can come in here, I can just flip these down, or I could just flip off one string if I wanted to. Each one of these is tied into one of these. <clears throat> so the idea is you want to make sure that the isolator switch is rated high enough to where the current coming off of the panels will never trip it off. This is just an isolator switch that you will manually disconnect your panels and that's all we're using it for, just to disconnect the current coming in from the panels through the charge controller. So being rated at 63 amps here and 250 volts, that's much higher than what I'm running here. These are capable of 50 amps and 100 volts each, and each one tied into a separate isolator switch. So you don't want the current from your solar panels ever to be able to trip this. If they are putting out max power, which would be roughly close to the uh, specifications of this, you want it sized well over that because you're just using this as a simple cutoff switch. And when you're hooking up your charge controllers, you always want to energize them from the battery side first. So when you're hooking it up, you want to make sure that you connect the battery to the charge controllers first. And lastly, you will open up your solar panel array when you're ready to start charging up your battery through the charge controller. You want to make sure and do it in that order because if you were to, say, turn your panels on first before you've connected your charge controllers to the battery, you can damage your charge controller. It's best to energize those. And in fact, you should always energize them from the battery side first and make the current coming in from the solar panels the last thing you flip on. So in all of these systems that I build, I put these switches in here for that particular reason. Like when I want to go to putting something else in here or disconnecting it and moving it, the first thing I'll come in here and do is flip that off. No power coming in from the solar panels. And then I'll go ahead and disconnect the charge controller from the battery. And then when you decide to hook it back up, you do it in the exact opposite order. Tie in, hook up your battery first. At the very last, come in, flip your 
isolator switch on and allow power from the solar panels to come in. And on this one, same thing. It's got 63 amps and a thousand volt. So well above what's ever going to come in from the solar panels. Solar panels will not trip this. We're not using this as a as a breaker. We're using it as a cutoff switch. So you just want to make sure that your voltage and your amps on whatever size of an isolator you go with well exceeds what the panels are capable of producing because you don't want to have it uh, anywhere near what the solar panels are creating so it would start acting as a cutoff switch so you don't want that that's not the way i do it anyway so i want the solar panels to just be able to be turned off right here and then i can go about disconnecting turning wrenches and sticking something else in so you want the amps and the voltage to well exceed what the panels are capable of producing and right here if we just take a peek on amazon to show you guys how much these things cost they're like 16 bucks they come with the uh, what they call a din rail mount as you can see to the right of that switch you just screw that onto your wall where you want it and then the switch just snaps into place there. You can get covers if you want to, like you saw on that one. And you can see that there's various sizes to get. Like this one we're looking at is the uh, 63 amp, 1000 volt. So I use these quite a bit. They well exceed any current coming in from my solar panels. So I'm just simply using it as a turn off the solar panel array as I get ready to make any kind of adjustments on my system. And same thing on this particular charge controller. That's a 100 volt, 30 amp charge controller from Victron. Same thing, I've got 500 watts of solar tied into this particular system. And you can see this is a 63 amp, 1000 volt cutoff switch. So under no circumstances will those panels exceed the rating of this switch so just a simple cut off switch and same thing here on this particular system this is a 150 volt 35 amp charge controller running a 48 volt system again 63 amp 1000 volt uh, isolator switch works well my panels will never exceed uh, that amount on that switch either. So that's the, that's the whole idea behind using these as a, just a cutoff switch. Make sure they well exceed anything that would be possible coming in from your solar panels. So you want to make sure you oversize that cutoff switch from anything that you're doing. Because we're not looking at this to be a, a breaker you know, an automatic breaker. If you had a voltage surge from your panels or something like that, uh, which I've never really seen, it's possible, but, you know, make sure it's well exceeding your charge controller ratings. And then you've got a nice, easy turnoff switch to get ready to work on your system. And we're back to where we started. This is the 63 amp 250 volt switch and it works well for this system lately as i've been building other systems i just get the 63 1000 volt sometimes it's just due to availability or whatnot and you can see there we are just went over into absorption mode everything's looking great today even on a kind of a, a gray day 93% full, going to be a great solar day, even with uh, clouds up there in the sky. So yeah, like I said, in years past, uh, anytime I wanted to disconnect the solar array, I'd come out here, crawl underneath, disconnect everything, uh, which still sometimes you actually need to do depending what you're doing. But uh, for a lot of my just reconfigurations when I'm working inside, I just simply flip that switch, turn the panels off, 
and then I know I have no current coming in. And it makes things much easier. Up to a very nice solar charging day today. Thanks as always for tuning in everybody. Hope you're all having a great day. Aloha.